So last week we talked about in the spirit, the beginning, the version from this series that we had just started. But today we're going to get back to it. And you know what? We can actually tie in the in the spirit with what we're going to talk about today. So it wasn't really a diversion. It was a tie-in. So uh, we're talking about in this new series. <laughs> uh, oh, buddy. That brings me up to one more piece, and I'm going to put this one. I'm glad it's going to be on camera. Uh, we've had a couple of people reach out to the church who want to, who are looking for a church, and this is a place that they've asked other people about that they want to come to. But there's one drawback. You know what that drawback is? We have nothing for the little kids. There are families with little kids. Now, ironically, when we got these blue chairs, the church we got these blue chairs from, that big trailer that came up here, we unloaded all those things, was, I think, two or three big boxes of children's curriculum. Plus a brand new DVD player, plus DVDs for children's stuff, plus we have a TV down there that's web-enabled, and we have Right Now Media, we have access to as much children's content as we need. What we don't have access to is somebody who's willing to go down there and work with little kids. So pray about that. Pray that God will bring somebody in. Uh, uh, Troy's wife, Megan, is willing, but she's not at the point where she can do that every week. So if we had somebody we could rotate and put on the schedule, that is something that would, that would actually help grow the church is by providing that one service. So if you have a heart for that, if it's something you think you would like to do, it doesn't have to be every Sunday. Just if we could get a couple of people who are willing to rotate Sundays, then that would be awesome. And that goes for all you folks on Facebook, too. But some That's one reason why some folks aren't here. They're watching on Facebook is because they don't want to fight with their children. And I don't call I don't think having the kids running around is a problem. That's life. That shows the church as life. Mm -hmm. But I know because I was actually on the other side. When I was the parent and people were giving me the looks at church, I didn't like it. So, uh, so I get it. But uh, pray about that because we have an opportunity. Like Again, we've had other people reach out to the church who are interested in coming here. They, they like our open worship style. They like the expressions of our worship. They like the teaching. We've had one person who reached out who isn't really a church person. He's just feeling that I, I need to do something and I want something where my kids can get engaged and I can start learning and growing. These are opportunities. So pray about it. Let God do what God does best. So we're talking about the nameless. We're going through the Bible and we're looking at the nameless people in the Bible. And we're talking about finding our identity in the unidentified. The first week we talked about the Ethiopian eunuch and Philip. And we looked at that Ethiopian eunuch and we, we looked at ourselves in the picture. A lot of times we, as a matter of fact, uh, uh, Brother Lowenberg taught the same thing the second night of the second day of the prayer and fasting. He taught from the same passage. And of course he was preaching from the, the as we were Philip, who will go and who will explain. And he's a missionary. Of course that's where he's going to go to, right? When, when I did it the Sunday before, we looked at the role of the Ethiopian eunuch, the unidentified person. The person who traveled a long distance to come worship God only to get locked out of the temple. Because in Deuteronomy it says that eunuchs aren't allowed in the temple. <laughs> Those who have been emasculated through crushing or removing can't worship. So he gets he has this idea of God and he the desire for God, but he gets there and then God's people turn him away. And we talked about maybe that's why he's in the chariot. You can tell him where his spirit was because he was so hungry. Me, if I had drove all that way, I gave up, risked my job on a, almost a one year's journey for a round trip from Addis Ababa, Ethiopia to Jerusalem by chariot, not by plane. You know, risking his job in the palace only to get turned away. I don't think I'd be reading from the Isaiah scroll. I think I'd be done with that God thing. If this is the, hey, we've all had church hurt, right? We've all been abused by church. We've all had times where churches, you know, we, we felt like it should have been one way, but it was a different way. And I want nothing to do with this. If we're honest, we've been there. And that's where I think I was surprised when I'm reading this text. I'm going, man, he, he wasn't, he's, he's trying to read. Why? And we, we learned.
learned about in that passage of Isaiah. It's called the prophecy of comfort and peace, where he was reading. He's probably sitting there wondering, okay, where's the comfort and peace if I get shut out? And in this passage, what was he reading? He's reading God tell through Isaiah that eunuchs who, who love me and worship me and keep my Sabbath, I will give a name greater than son or daughter. So now he's really confused. This is why Peter, I mean Philip had to come and explain. Because he was like, okay, I don't think it was, we've always taught this before, and I've heard this taught, I've, I've heard people preach it before, that the eunuch was maybe kind of dull, and he didn't under, he couldn't read it. Well, he's the top treasurer for the queen of Ethiopia. Yeah. He, he's not stupid. He's reading, probably in Greek, yeah. you know, because he's versed in the, the language of commerce in that day. So I think his, how will I know unless somebody explains it to me, was more of, why don't you explain to me why this says God will invite me into his house and give me a name greater than son and daughter, and they would let me in the house. Why don't you explain that to me? That's why Philip says he opened the scripture from there and preached Jesus to him. Because the difference is, is they didn't have Jesus. If they had Jesus, they would have let you in. That was the difference. So we saw that, and we wondered, how many times have we been in that place? We, 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 where our reality looks different than what we're reading. Our reality looks different than what we're hearing. Our reality looks different than what people are telling us. We, we come to camp meeting and John Harkey says a word over us, but we go home and it doesn't look anything like what he said. You know, that God's going to do this and God's going to do that and God's going to do this, but we go home and, okay, God, I don't see any of that. Will you explain it to me? So that was last week. We said we're that person. And so the blessing was, is praise God that there was a Philip who was willing to listen to the Holy Spirit and go and tell this guy. Today we're going to look at somebody else. Today we're going to go to Acts chapter 3 and look at a different person. And I think this is a situation where we can find ourselves in a lot of similarities. Maybe even more so than the eunuch. Acts chapter 3, we're going to start at verse 1. Now Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which was called Beautiful, to ask alms from those who entered the temple. Who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked for alms. And fixing his eyes on him with John, Peter said, Look at us. So he gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. So he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered the temple with them, walking, leaping, and praising God. Familiar passage, right? We know the story. But let's take a look at this story and break this down. There's this unidentified man. This man that the only identification we have of him is he's lame. Now, I know we've all know some people that we've called lame. We know some lame folks, right? This is all we know about this guy is he's lame. We know he's a man. So in Jewish culture, he's got to be over 13. Because 13, bar mitzvah, right? You become a man. You get that? So at least for 13 years we know of, this person has been lame. He's had this issue. Lameness. But because of his issue, this is where I want us to get to. Right here, ready? I hope you're paying attention, maybe writing notes, whatever. But because of his issue, lameness, since that issue was never addressed, what has happened to his life? More issues have piled up. Right? If I want to get to the temple, somebody's got to carry me. So now I have another issue. I've got to find somebody to carry me. Oh, I'm lame. I can't get a job. So now I have another issue. How am I going to get money to get food? Now I have to beg. Issue upon issue piles up on top of each other. For this person's entire life, he's laying at the temple. 
dealing with issues. He's identified by one, but he's living on multiple. He's begging. I wonder, I just wonder, how many of us, no raising of hands, have been stuck in an issue that didn't get dealt with, and the next thing you know, we turn around, and that one issue has now invited four more on top of it. Because we haven't dealt with that one issue, now I have this issue that I got to deal with. And I can't deal with the original issue because I'm so stuck having to deal with the other ones. So this is what's happening. This man is sitting at the temple gate. Peter and John are coming. And he says this. He's lame. Hey, can you give me a couple of cents to buy some bread? His focus was on, give me some money to buy some bread. Do you got a couple of pennies to spare, brother? That was his focus. Is there anything wrong with it? No, he's got to eat, right? <laughs> but I love what happens. I, I, I believe that's why this story is in here. Because what did Peter do? Because the reality is, is Peter and John, because you had to have alms to get into the temple. All right, folks? That was They probably had silver and gold. There was money available. I believe we see this story because what's happening is Peter is going up and saying, hold on, buddy. Yeah, I know you want a couple of pennies to get some bread. But if we can fix this issue, all the other issues go away. Silver, you, what, you don't need what you think you need. You've been in your issue so long that you've forgotten the original and everything else has clouded you. Silver and gold, you don't need. But in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. Because if you can walk, the other issues go away. There's no more waking up in the morning wondering who's going to carry me to the temple. There's no more, how am I going to get a job to feed my family? Or have a family? Have a lineage? Can you imagine the worries that he was dealing with? Because issue after issue, I'm lame. I, I, I have no nothing to provide for a family. I can never have a family. When I die, my name's just going to end. It's over. And to a male in a Jewish culture in the first century, that is terrible. That is almost worse than the lameness. Is to not have the legacy. And Peter cut right through it. And said, no, 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 buddy. This is what you need. Because if we could fix this, if we get this right, everything else will start to get right. And sometimes I wonder how many times have we been stuck in layer upon layer of issues crying out for God to help us here and he's in there saying, no, 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 let me help you here. If I can help you here, all the here goes away. All the here starts to come in place. It doesn't mean he ran out and got it, somebody offered him a job. I, I don't know. But the ability to correct the issues goes away. I think in terms of like Team Challenge, Taylor being here today or at our house last night and, and Rozo today will be seeing that we'll be going to Team Challenge tomorrow is mine and Tracy's visitation day. And I think about it and I think about addiction programs. You see them on TV all the time, right? Addiction recovery programs, come to this place, come to that place. We had a friend who went to one in East Grand Forks. And the thing is, is you know what they do? They deal with the one issue. Right? Well, we get you off the addiction. That's no different than just giving this guy a couple of pennies to get some bread. Because unless you deal with the issue that caused the addiction, the thing that led you to it in the first place, you may not go back to that addiction, but I'm going to tell you something. Statistics show us you will go to something else. Unless we deal with the other one. I was thinking about the other I was thinking about this morning, I was in here meditating. You know, we, we got we, we send people to anger management class. We just deal with the anger management. That's your issue. Your issue is anger. Well, why don't we get to why? 
if we get to the why, the anger goes away. If this guy gets legs, he doesn't have to beg. But what is he worried about? Because he's so stuck in his issue. For so many years, it's just piled up on top of him. To where all he knows, this is all I know. To where even in Scripture, we are identifying this guy based off his issues. Not even his name. But one of my favorite parts... And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. So he, the lame man, the unidentified, leaping up, stood and walked and entered the temple with them. See, when you fix the main issue, you go from beggar to worshiper. He's no longer begging outside the gates, he's worshiping inside. If Peter and John would have just thrown some pennies into his cup, they may, he may have got some food and that issue would have been solved for a day. Yep. But he would still be the next day out in front of the temple begging for money. But because of Peter and John's faithfulness, because of their willingness, because of them, let's just say it, last week, right? Being in the spirit. Remember, they just came from Pentecost. Pentecost just happened because they were in the spirit. They were able to see through to the root of the issue. Now, Pastor, how can you equate the two, the in the spirit and this? Because how can you say that? I can say that easily because in Matthew 15, we see a different story of a woman coming to Jesus, a, a Canaanite woman, in Tyre and Sidon, a pagan area where they had idol worship comes to Jesus and asks for her daughter to be healed because she's demon-possessed. And what do the disciples, i.e. Peter and John, say? Jesus, send her away. She's bugging us. She is bugging us. Get rid of her. Another nameless person. And Jesus doesn't talk to the woman. He, and even, even when he did talk to the woman, he was actually directing it towards the disciples. Yeah, you're right. Huh? I'm only good for the Jews. I'm not good for her. You're not Jesus, you're right, get rid of her. No, no, no. And then she comes back and she worships even more. And Jesus says, I haven't seen such faith. Woman, your daughter's okay. Go home. But what did Peter and John do then? God, this woman is annoying me. She keeps asking us, will you master heal our son? Can we need, I need my daughter healed. Come on, my daughter is demon possessed. She's uh, and she's tormented. And the disciples' response was, Ah, Jesus, she's bugging us. We've been on the road all day. Can we take a break? Get rid of her. But in this situation, what's the difference? Pentecost has come. There's a new spirit living inside Peter and John now. So now, when the person who, oh my God, this guy, he's always asking for money. Every time we come in here to the temple, that same guy's there, and he's always begging. Good God, what's somebody give, give him a nickel and shut him up? But this day, because they were in the Spirit, they came with a different agenda. Because in the Spirit didn't see the annoyance, in the Spirit saw the issue and was able to speak directly to the issue and solve the rest of the problem. What a powerful thing to be able to do that. And you know, I, I think as I was meditating on this this morning, because I was originally going to talk about somebody else, but then this morning, shame, there it goes. I was thinking about that. You know, again, okay, let's go back. They were in the spirit because Pentecost just happened. This guy, it says he's lame, right? His feet, his legs and ankles didn't work since birth. Doesn't say he's deaf. Doesn't say he's blind. I assume if he was at the temple gate today worshiping or begging for alms, he was probably at the temple gate today before begging for alms. He was probably at the temple today before that thing. Was, he probably had a regular spot. When we were in, in uh, Portland heading back to California a couple of years ago for vacation, uh, there's this place in Portland called Voodoo Donuts. Amazing donuts. They have this maple donut with bacon on top of it. Oh my goodness, it's so good. And 
So we had a four hour layover at the train station. So we were going to go, Tracy stayed with Charlie, and William and Christian and I were going to walk a couple of blocks to Voodoo Donuts. And when I go back to California back in 2012, I did it, there was no problem. It was a nice little walk. It's a little, you go to a little Chinatown area, it's pretty. Go through the big Tory Gate type thing, it's really nice. This year it was different. We were walking, we got halfway there, and William says, Dad, can we just go back? Because you're stepping over people sleeping on the sidewalk. There's defecation everywhere. There's needles everywhere. There's chalk on the sidewalks where they chalk off areas, and they write their name in it. This is my spot. It, it's, like, it's like when you look at a subdivision map, you know how it has all the squares and the, the, the spots? Like that? And okay, I want to buy square number two. Well, they had the whole sidewalk was chalked out with people's names. Wasn't it, Christian? Tents. Some were just lean tos. We walked by one family that was in a brand new tent. He looked like a businessman. They had a nice table set up outside their tent. They must have just got in this situation. You know, they had they had pets. They were like a regular middle class yuppie family, just down on their luck. What I don't know, maybe he got hooked on drugs or something and he lost everything. But he's out there, he's she's got nice clothes on and they're sitting down at their little table having coffee and got the little dog with a little leash there. And their tent. Right behind him. That's probably what this guy was. He probably had his spot, just like they did. That he would go to every day. Now here's the thing, okay. So, you have your spot that you go to every day at the temple. Well, what just happened? The Holy Spirit fell on the upper room. 120 people came out speaking in tongues. Every, the whole community goes crazy. There's something crazy going on over at Mark's mom's house. Right? Everybody rushes out to go see what happens. Peter stands up on top of a table. This is not what you would think it is. This is what the prophet Joel prophesied. In the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. So, this guy had to have known that something, something amazing happened. He, if he had been lame for 13 years, Jesus has only been gone for 40 days. And if, if Jesus' miracles were heard all the way up to Syria, this guy had to have known that there was a man named Jesus who walked around healing people on a regular basis. And now, just a couple of days ago, his followers got filled with his spirit, and they're doing amazing, crazy things. Oh, my goodness. But what's his first response? Hey, you got a couple of pennies for some bread? Because he was so lost and so buried in all of his issues that he couldn't even see the real need that he had. Because 13 years at least of life piling up on top of him, pile after pile after pile, that the real issue got lost. And in his mind, in his spirit, a couple of pennies is all I need. But praise God, Peter wasn't the Peter before Pentecost. Praise God, Peter was the post-Pentecost Peter. And when he saw the man, he said, no, 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 no. You don't need a couple of pennies for some bread. You need what I got. Because what I got is going to solve all your problems. I, I love the way it is because you think of Jesus, you know, no, 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 no. You, talking to the woman at the well, oh, you want some water? Well, I got some water. Another nameless person, right? You want some water? I got some. If you take my water, then you'll never have to come here again. All the issues you think you have, they'll go away. I want you guys to stop and think sometimes. Because I get it, right? Especially in today's day and age. In 2021, life can get very overwhelming very quickly. Things can pile up on us so fast. Trust me, all you gotta do is look at my calendar. Not even bad issues, just the issues of everyday life. They start to pile up and pile up. Oh, I, I got work. I, I think of a couple of weeks ago, and I won't say the name, but everybody will know the name when I say it, when I say the situation. We went to prayer and fasting. Myself and three other gentlemen from the church. There was a fourth one who should have went. There was a bed already for that fourth one. 
because the issues that he was dealing with weren't going to be solved with what he thought the issue was. He thought the issue was, i got to be at work to deal with this. Well, that's only going to give him a temporary fix. If he would have done the other, can I say everything would be perfect in his life right now? No. But I tell you what, his heart and his life would be in a better spot. But because the issues of his life were piling up on top of him, the overwhelmingness, he couldn't see past, oh my gosh, what am I going to do if I lose this job? Instead of the real issue, what am I going to do if I lose my life? Folks, that's how important this is. I think more often than not, our prayer life, we pray like this nameless guy. God, just give us what we need just to get by. Give us, give us, God, just give us a couple of pennies. Because you know what? Because sometimes, folks, I, I get it. It's hard to get to the root sometimes. Sometimes we don't want to get down to that point and have to get to, oh my gosh. You know what? This is all because of this issue. And, and here's the thing. Like this guy here, this guy here, let, let's, let's look at this. I, I, I prayed about this morning, and I thought, you know what? This, I had a lady tell me yesterday she was kind of upset that I didn't have my column in the newspaper anymore. So I'm thinking this may be my next column in the newspaper, writing this one out, because I think this is where we're at. This guy was in a position, let's, let's, oh, let's look at this even deeper way. What did he do wrong? Nothing. Lameness was thrust upon him. He wasn't an X game guy out there doing crazy bicycle stunts and fall and break his back. He didn't do anything crazy. He didn't fall off a roof. He didn't know. He was something happened to his mom when she was giving childbirth and he ended up lame. Can we explore that one for a minute? Because let's look at him and then let's look at the nameless woman at the well. You have five. We've had five husbands. And the one you're with now, you say he's just a friend. Right? She was making conscious decisions to do things. Now, things might have happened to her that caused her to do that. But this guy, he was in a situation and an issue that he had no control over. But you know what he didn't have control over? All the other issues that piled up on top of him. So we have two categories of people sometimes. Most times. Some of us are people who have our issues thrust upon us. And some of us are the people who jump head first into our issues. And they never deal with them. And then they compound and compound and compound. And the next thing you know, you're faced with a loss of a job, a loss of a family, a loss of a loved one, uh, loss of your own life. And praise God that there are Peters and Johns in the world who will hear his voice and recognize what the real need is to get people out of this mess. I wonder what would happen, Clinton, if the guy would have resisted. Because, I mean, the Bible tells us that, oh, Peter grabbed his hand and said, no, you're coming, buddy. We're solving this issue today. Exactly. And I think sometimes that's the problem. Sometimes we don't know. Sometimes we know, but it gets so buried. Sometimes, sometimes like this guy. Because he may not think of it as an issue because he had nothing to do with it. This is just the way I was born. I was born this way. I mean, I mean we could go into a whole other year talking about people with that, that answer, right? Well, I was just born this way. <laughs> I inherited it. But couldn't society have increased his chances of not doing anything about it too? Yep, because that's your spot. Yeah. You're lame, that's where you go. And I think that's why society's showing that he was tied to his issue. I think that's one reason why we have him as a nameless person, because I'm sure Peter and John, somebody probably would have told him, hey, man, are you those guys who prayed for, for, for Ezekiel over there? I'm sure somewhere probably somebody heard his name. But why does the scripture not give us his name? 
the show is, I mean, that same thing that you're talking about here is that the society sometimes locks us into our issue. And that's how they define us, whether we want to be defined that way or not. So for the rest of history, until we get to heaven, we only know this guy because he had an issue. We know him by the name the world gave him. Yeah. Lame guy. That's the lame guy. Oh, he dealt with the lame guy today. I think probably all of us have had a time in our life where the world has defined us by an issue. Oh, you're the guy who stutters. Oh, you're the guy who does this. Oh, you're the girl who does that. And I think about like our single moms outreach being defined by an issue without knowing the reasons. We never know the particulars. And so what do we do? So, oh, let, I mean, let's just Let's just peel this onion right away, right? So instead of being Peter and John, and saying, you know what? I, I get it. Let me minister right to the heart of it. What caused you to be an unworthy mother? What caused the situation? Was it was it uh, a loss of a husband? We don't know. What was it? Was it a, a promiscuous activity? Was it because you were molested as a child? Was it because you were raped? Those things. Let's get to the heart of it. Let, let's heal that. But instead of being Peter and John, you know what we do? Let's put a big scarlet A on you because you just walked into church and you ain't got no man and you got a baby, so you must be. And so what do we do? Instead of going to the issue and ministering Christ to it, we add more issues on top of it. So the world defines them one way and we just pile on. We pile on. Again, Jesus sent her away. She's part of us. She's a Canaanite woman. She ain't even one of us. She's a woman. And she's talking about her daughter. There ain't no guy in the picture. And she's talking to a Jewish, at minimum to most people, a good teacher and a prophet. That is a complete no-no. In Tyre and Sidon, a place of pagans and idol worship. I love what, what Doug Lowenberg said. He said, we don't know, maybe when this little girl was born... Because we don't see a father in the picture. Maybe your father's dead. Maybe when this little girl was born, she was dedicated to the idols. And that's why she's tormented. And this mom is so desperate to have her daughter released. And the, the disciples' only answer is, get rid of her. She's bugging us. She ain't one of us. She's not like us. Leave. I wonder how many times the church is that way. I wonder how many times we've been the unnamed person who needs a touch from God, but only got that response. Lord, I pray from this day forward, now that we have, with revelation comes responsibility, right? So now that we have revelation, we can't be those people. We have to be the people who say, let's get to the heart of it. Let me minister to you. Let me show you Jesus, and all those issues will go away. Like the woman at the well, let me introduce you to the seventh man, the perfect man. And everything else goes away. But let's also not be like the man. Who probably knew who these guys were. Isn't that Peter dude I heard about who was standing up on a table chastising priests the other day? Oh my goodness. And here he's coming my way. I, I bet you he's got some money. Instead of, like the priest. I mean, it's, it, I find it so weird because the priest, in just a couple of verses later, they're like, oh my gosh. These guys have been with Jesus. They recognize it. How come this guy didn't? Because his issues had piled up so much that all they could think about was a couple of pennies so I can get some bread. Let's not be like that person and get so buried in our issues, so lost in our issues that when God's trying to minister to the heart of it, that we don't allow Him to because we lose focus on what the real issue is. The real issue is let Jesus heal the lameness in your life. 
let Jesus heal that broken piece and all the other pieces can line up. Now, I'm not going to end it there and just make you all go out here thinking everything's going to be bells and whistles. Because just because this guy got his legs back, he had to go apply for a job. All right? But the ability to solve the issues was gone. So now, if he didn't have bread, if he didn't have money for, for some bread, whose fault was it? Was it the fault of the guys walking by him not giving him any money, or was it his? So now he had to own all the other issues. Now I got to own them. Because maybe this first issue was thrust upon me. I didn't do anything to make myself win. But all the other issues, uh-oh, I got to own those. And I think sometimes at church that's the other problem is we don't want to own our issues. We don't want to own our problems. We want to act spiritual. And I have no issues. Look at me. I could copy and paste the Bible verse from the Version Bible app and put it on Facebook. I'm spiritual. I don't have issues. Look at me. I wear the right kind of clothes to church. I don't have issues. No. The reality is, is all of us have come in with issues. All of us have had to deal with things. All of us have had things thrust upon us, and all of us had things that we put or brought upon ourselves. And the answer for all of us is still the same thing. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And I love the fact that this man who just a minute ago was begging for a couple of pennies to get some bread, when he got up and walked, didn't go to the bread store, he went to the temple. There was an instantaneous recognition that what I thought I needed wasn't over there. It was on the other side of these walls all along. That's what the power of being in the Spirit is about. That's what the power of that's owning our issues. Realizing what we really need. Laser focusing our prayer life. That's why David didn't say, God, forgive me for committing adultery. You know what David said? David said, God, wash me, purge me, cleanse me, and create in me a new heart. Because I don't have a lust issue, I have a heart issue. And so you can take away my lust, but if my heart's not right, I may not cheat on my wife again and kill her husband, but there's other things I could fall into. So David understood, I got to get to the heart of it. I got to get to the depths of it. And then the last thing is, let's not be Peter pre-Pentecost. Now, they're probably me. And these people, they come to the church all the time. Can I be... I hate to admit this, but sometimes there's been some people that I've had to deal with as a pastor that when I see them, it's like, I hope they don't see me in the grocery store. <laughs> Across the street so you don't meet them? Uh, put them down a different aisle. Please, Lord, just this once. You look at the phone rings and you look at it, it's like, I've been guilty of being the pre-Pentecost pastor. And it takes dedication. It takes it takes a word that we've been saying a lot. It takes intensity. It takes a ruthless desire and pursuit to be the post-Pentecost person. <laughs> Who can walk in the spirit, not in the flesh. Because we're in the flesh, we're only going to see the issue. You're bugging me. Where when we're in the spirit, we can see there's a reason why they're here. And if the Holy Spirit can get us to that reason, they won't bug us no more. <laughs> right? We can see the solution. Let's be those people. <coughs> Let's be those people who walk in the spirit. Who can see the issue. Who can deal with the issue. Who are brave enough, tenacious enough, 
to fuel the layer's passion. And don't just ask for some pennies and be satisfied begging outside the temple. But allow God to minister to the heart of it so you can get in the temple. So you can get in his presence. What a sad thing that this guy was outside the temple. You know, we get we, we don't have to be inside, we can be outside and be in his presence, right? But yet this guy was outside of the temple, a place where God's presence, where in the Old Testament the cloud would come down and his presence would rest on top of it. Remember the stories of the Old Testament tabernacle, right? The, the glory cloud, right? They call it Shekinah glory. It would just come and just hang on top of the temple. And all the, all the tribes knew that God was present, right? This guy's sitting in that spot. Sitting in that spot. I'm sure God's presence could radiate through a wall. But because of the issues, I mean, can you worship him in your loneliness? You know what, God? I may not be able to walk today, but I'm going to worship you. Because it's not about silver and gold. It's not about what I can get. It's not about what I think I need. But I'm just going to worship you. I wonder what would have happened if that was his life. I think the Pentecost that was in the upper room could have reached him too. God, I know there's this Jesus guy. I know. It's just like, like the, the woman in Tyre and Sidon, the Canaanite woman. She comes up, she calls him, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me and my daughter. She's in a pagan land, yet she knew who he was. This guy was in the Holy Land, next to the temple. And because of his issues, he couldn't recognize when Jesus walked right up to him. When the Holy Spirit was right there. That all they could ask for was, can you give me some pennies for some bread? Brother, can you spare a dime? As we leave this place today, let the Holy Spirit peel back your layers. Because I know every single one of us, we got COVID, we got elections, we got taxes, we got high gas prices, we got unemployment, we got this, we got that. We got, how come I can't buy a toilet paper at Dollar General? We got whatever. <laughs> Issue. Just pile, pile, pile. I think today, especially this time in, in our history, the Holy Spirit's crying out, let me peel back all that stuff and let me show you the heart. The heart of the whole thing is a nation turned back to Jesus. The heart of the whole thing is we got a nation who's sitting by a temple gate begging. We got a government who's begging for our money. We got begging for us to do this, begging for us to do that. We got people begging to, to go here, to go there. It is like we're, we're an entire nation of beggars. We're, we're, we are the, this nation, this, this people. We are the guys outside the gate. We're just we're begging. We have been lame. Our legs have been cut out from underneath us, and this is where we're at. And our only answer is, uh, please let me wear a mask. Please don't let me wear a mask. Please vaccinate me. Please don't vaccinate me. Please do this. Please do that. Give me a couple of pennies so I can get some bread. And the real answer is not mask, don't mask, vaccinate, don't vaccinate. The real answer is Jesus. Allow Jesus to heal the lameness and everything else can fall into place. marriages. Oh, it's finances. Oh, it's anger. Oh, it's pornography. Oh, it's this. Oh, it's that. And it just piles on and piles on and piles on. And the reality is, is you want your marriage saved? It's Jesus. It's not anger management. It's not a, It's not an accountability class. Those are all good. Don't. I'm not saying those are wrong. I'm saying those, may, those should be used. But the root is Jesus is something is now lame in that marriage. Jesus has to come heal it. And if we don't let him do that, relationships, friendships, workplaces, you can put it anywhere. And it's there. 
Oh, if they only hire, I'm going through it. Okay. The normal person in two weeks, right, works 80 hours at my job. I'm putting in over 100 at the other job in two weeks because we're short -handed. So instead of working 10 to 7 some nights, I have to work 7 to 7. Just the way it is. I work five days one week, four days the next week, or four days next week, and I still get over 100 hours. So the answer, what's the answer? Oh, just hire somebody. Is, really? Is that really the answer? Or is that just something else that we think that's on top of it? That the work will be perfect if we just hired somebody else. Our business would be great if we just got this person. <laughs> you, you know we can't go uh, the entire service without me putting a sports knowledge in there, right? <laughs> Don't we see that in sports all the time? We can win a championship if we just get this person. But we don't realize the issue is. The issue is, is you can't hit the ball. So you can bring one person in all you want, and he's the only person hitting the ball for you. How are you going to win a championship that way? You're not. The issue is, teach your players how to bat. Teach Shaquille O'Neal how to shoot a free throw. Right? But we think, well, if we bring this star in, if we bring this person in, like I said, I talked to John the other day. He's supposed to be getting back with me about next year. And isn't that part of it? That's something that we have to look at here to make sure our culture doesn't turn that way. Because, okay, uh, I have these issues, but I have to wait till the big speaker comes. I heard, uh, and I'll close with this. I heard Pastor Ron Carpenter when he was back in South Carolina years ago. Uh, and you, you had your your ideas about this evangelist all you want but Penny Hinn contacted him because he has a large church in South Carolina and at that time so Penny Hinn contacted him and said I would, I'm coming through that area I have an open date I would love to do a healing service at your church so Pastor Ron said okay that's fine we can do a healing service in church. so they announced Benny Hinn is going to be here on this date he said the line and he had a 5,000 seat auditorium his church the line was out the door and around the block. They, they, the campus there in South Carolina took up like multiple blocks where they have a they have a gymnasium and all the other buildings for all the different ministries. The, 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 the line for people to get in went like around the whole thing. Because people had to get because Benny Hinn's there. I can get healed today. My issues can be fixed because Benny Hinn's here. And then so Benny Hinn came, went. The next Sunday, Pastor Ron got up and said, Wasn't that amazing? Benny Hinn was here. And people got healed. Yeah, praise God, praise God. He says, No. Because the sister sitting in the seat next to you could have laid hands on you. If God's presence is in the room, healing's already here. Isn't it a shame we had to wait for the big guy, the guy with the name, to come? Let's deal with our issues today. The Holy Spirit's here. He's among us. He's with us. He's in us. We don't have to carry the issue anymore. You're worrying about purpose. What's my purpose? What does God have for my future? Well, I'll wait till John Harkey comes here. Maybe he'll prophesy over me. No. Get in the Spirit. So when John does come, you know what John will do? What John says of you just be confirmation of what the Holy Spirit's already told you. So I'm not negating the big name people. I'm not negating having evangelists and stuff like that because the, the Holy Spirit calls for prophets, apostles, pastors, teachers, and evangelists, right? They're, they're, they already have their purpose. But when we hold on to our issues and wait for them, you know what happens? When you start today with three issues, by the time he gets here, you got eight. <laughs> and now he's got to peel through layers just to get down to one. And he's only here for one night, like that's going to happen. You've had months to deal with it. So that had 13 years to reconcile himself to an issue. Today, let's let the Holy Spirit go back to layers. And let's stop identifying ourselves by our issues. I'm a person with an anger management. I'm a person who's an addict. I'm a person who's this. Uh, this is a little bit too much. I'm one reason why.
why I'm not a fan of like Alcoholics Anonymous, especially the old model. The new model is a little different, but the old model, you know, you had to get up and say, hi, my name is Joe and I'm an alcoholic, even if you hadn't had a drink for 20 years. The whole system was built to identify you by your issue. And so if I identify you by your issue, I can keep you trapped into the system. That's what society tries to do. Why, I'm from California, right? Why do you think you got so many people on welfare? Because if you can identify them by an issue, and then you tell them that I'm going to help you not solve your issue, but give you what I think what you think you need for your issue, you create a cycle, and now you're stuck in the issue. And the sad part about it is, folks, is this: it is I do believe in generational issues. I don't know if I'd like to go so far as like a Joyce Meyer generational curses and stuff like that. I know the Bible says things will be visited on third and fourth generation. I don't know if it's as, as extreme as that, but I do know this, that if something doesn't break in, in one cycle, the cycle will repeat itself. Maybe you could be the one who breaks the cycle in your family. Maybe you can be the one who breaks the cycle in your workplace. Maybe you can be the one who breaks... Maybe, maybe this church... That, okay. Uh, <laughs> I joked the other day. I saw in one of the other churches in town their, uh, their council minutes because the church gets their, their newsletter. And their council minutes, their last point of business in their last council minute, their last council meeting was... Uh, getting together to determine how we can be more impactful in our community. And I had somebody tell me, Pastor, you're doing that. Now, if I it was you, Troy, yesterday. Who said it? Yeah. You know what we're doing? We're breaking a cycle. Because it's not about just us engaging in the community. It's we're breaking a cycle in the community. I have, uh, praise God, other churches are saying, we got to get out of our walls. But it took somebody who said, you know what, we can't, the, the issue is, is we're trapped inside these walls. The church is lame because we're stuck. We're stuck inside. It took somebody saying, in the name of Jesus Christ, church, rise up and walk. I praise God it was me. If it wasn't me, God would have sent somebody. So it's nothing special towards me. I just happen to be the vessel. Just like Peter and John just happen to be the ones there. Because the reality is, is 120 people got filled with the Holy Ghost the day before. 3,000 people got saved. That means 3,120 people had the opportunity to tell this guy, in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. It just happened to be Peter and John who did it. And if they didn't do it, there was 3,118 others who could have. So if I didn't do it here, somebody else could have. So it's nothing special on me. It's just a willing vessel, but also a willingness of others to say, you're right. That's my issue. Let me rise up and walk. And I'll go walking with you. I know that he went into the temple with them. It wasn't a one and done. It was, let's get to the root of the issue. Now let's worship together. Amen. Can you imagine what would happen in this community, in this county, if even just this community became a, a, a community known for worship? But you know what? We're, we're moving past our issues. Okay, you may like the sprinkle babies, we may like the dump and dope, but we're going to move past our issues and go right to the root. Let's start ministering Jesus to people. You know it's something when the Catholic priest calls you up and says, how can we work on some addiction recovery program? Is there a way that we can work together? Because you've got a good heart for that, Pastor. Let's, uh, do you have any pro And not, not, let me use my tablet. Is, do you have any programs that we could use? That we can introduce? That we can work together on? You know what that means? We're peeling the layers back. And we're saying, in the name of Jesus Christ, let's rise up and walk, and let's go worship together. Man, can you imagine what would happen in northern Minnesota? 
if one little community said, you know, we're going we're gonna to put all that stuff aside, and we're just going to worship. We're going to rise up and walk. We're going to minister Jesus to our community. We're going to set aside the, the particulars. Okay, well, you speak in tongues, and they don't, and this and that. Well, let's, let's set that aside, and let's minister Jesus to the community. Because there's a community out there that is lame, that is sitting at the gates of our churches, begging for some bread, and what they really need is the living bread. And it's said that we have it, and we won't share it. But oh my goodness. I talked to Yvonne, who showed me something the other day about the Roseville Community Center. So I told John, I said, I don't want to have the camp meeting here. I want to have it in Roseau, in a bigger building, more seats, central place, get more people in. So it's not a Badger Northland Assembly event. It's a community event. Let the community come in. Let people from Warroad come. Let people come and get ministered to. Let's bring Jesus to the issues. There it lies the answers. Let's go. Heavenly Father, we just thank you. Lord, that you recognized our issues. You recognized our broken hearts. You recognized our brokenness, our, 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 our issues. That we had no I wasn't there when Adam ate the apple. But yet that issue was thrust upon me. And you, in your grace and your mercy, recognized it. And while I was yet a sinner, stuck in my issues, you died for me. Lord, I thank you that today, 2,000 years later, you're still healing people of their issues. You're still directing people, the people of God, the people of your spirit, to those places to minister to people and their issues. Lord, today, if we feel buried under our issues, today, give us the strength through the power of the Holy Spirit to start peeling back the layers so we can, we can expose that which really needs to be fixed, the root of so you can heal it and we can worship together. Lord, for those of us who have been healed, who are in the Peter of John's of our life, who have experienced the fullness of your Holy Spirit, give us the, the willingness, give us the strength, give us the courage to see beyond the surface in people so we can minister to the heart. For today, let us be people who bring Jesus. Let us be people who recognize the answer to whatever issue. Pornography, Jesus. Drugs, Jesus. Promiscuity, Jesus. Alcohol, Jesus. Anger, Jesus. Loneliness, Jesus. The answer is and always will be Jesus. Lord, we thank you for that everlasting truth. Lord, as we go today, let us be people who bring you, who see through our issues and can minister to those who are stuck in theirs. For those who are watching on Facebook who say, Pastor, I don't even know who this Jesus is. I'm still stuck. I'm so overwhelmed by my issues. It's simple. There's no gimmicks. There's no special tricks. The answer is, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. You don't have to be stuck in your sin your conditions, your problems, your worries, or your fears. Just grab his hand and walk and worship with him. And he is faithful and just. There's no special gimmick. It says you just got to admit you got it. I got an issue. And Jesus, I need you. And he is faithful to bring his love, his grace, and his healing to you. Lord, I thank you for that. Lord, I thank you for this day. I thank you for the rest of our time today. And we'll have a great and amazing day. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Oh, look at that. We started right at 11. Look at that. 12.30 almost. 12.30.